as we get ready for the green flag. It's the second race of the round of eight. An opportunity to lock themselves in to the championship four. There's Mike Helton waving the green flag. William Byron right away jumps out of line three wide in the third row. Quickly we see Bubba Wallace jumping out front Martin Truex Jr. did not have the start he was hoping for. Now to the bottom of the racetrack he challenges for the lead. Lap number one. A drag race to the line, and it looks like Mark Shrek's Jr. will lead the first lap. We talk so much about how the high lane is an advantage here, but that's a little later in the run. You see right now with the newer tires, both Mark Shrek and Bubba Wallace running lower on the racetrack. Bubba has two career wins, one at Talladega, one at Kansas. Kansas, he was dominant. And that's a mile and a half racetrack. A mile and a half, the distance of Homestead Miami Speedway as well. And why the shape is a little different, because it has kind of that D-shaped front stretch. The surface uh, is remarkably the same. You would think Kansas and Miami, maybe the asphalt would be different, but they really wear uh, and they abuse the Goodyear tires. The cars get harder to drive as they run. You can see right now what Truex is trying to do. He's really trying to overdrive the entry of the corner beat Bubba Wallace to the center so he can slide up in front of him, but Bubba's not letting it happen. Bubba drives in with a lot of speed, is able to stay door to door to Martin, and that keeps Martin pinched off. He's got to turn the steering wheel a great deal, which means he can't go back to the throttle like he wants to. Bubba on that outside lane, he's able to go back to the throttle and carry that momentum. If you settle in and take a deep breath and really don't abuse the tires early, you can extend the life cycle of those tires and have a little bit more grip longer. I say that because the 23 and the 19 seem to have been side by side for almost the entire 10 laps of this race. Shorter way around is right along the white line for Martin Trex Jr. Can he make it work this time to try to slide up in front of the 23? He completes the pass, but what will the momentum do for the 23 down the backstretch? Well, that's a pass you're going to see at Homestead. A little bit of a slide job, but you just overdrive the entry, slide up in front of the car. Martin Trex Jr now has the 24 of William Byron fighting him for the lead here at Homestead Miami is Byron making the move to the inside. Yeah he's using that bottom groove and saw this a little bit yesterday in the Xfinity race several cars able to work the bottom of the racetrack even down here in three and four where we've seen the top of three and four be dominant. The 24 making a little bit of ground at least maintaining right there he's gonna be able to clear the 19. A car that can work on the bottom of this racetrack is a pretty special thing. You rarely see it. You see a lot of cars be able to go find speed against the wall. Not everyone can run that bottom and make it work. The furthest back of the playoff drivers running is Busher, and he's all the way back at 27th, Kim. That's right, and right now that car has no maneuverability. He said he can't wear, run anywhere except for the bottom. The other thing that was concerning to crew chief Scott Graves and his team headed into this race was their fire off speed. He felt like that was going to be their biggest struggle is finding that balance between fire off speed and then speed and balance over the long runs. As you see the five of Kyle Larson right next to him. And this is fun to see him try to make this pass on the bottom of the racetrack. It, we saw his teammate, the 24 Kyle, or, uh, the 24 Byron, make the pass for the lead earlier running the bottom. And look how well he does pinning that left front to the to the white line. That whole car is just sliding through the corner. Takes such discipline on the throttle and the steering to do that. And discipline on corner entry, right? See Frank Kozlowski now trying to jump back on the outside. Now Larson's going to just slide right up in front of Brad, put Brad in a situation. What am I going to do? Brad lifts a little bit. A little bit of give and take early in the race. Yeah, a little bit of movement in the back of that car off of turn two. You're going to have that. He's committed to the gas right here. A little shift. Starts to try to go to gas. Wants to commit. Wants to see those cars driving away from him. He's like, I got to get more throttle. He's just asking too much of the rear tires. That's exactly where Joey Logano spun out yesterday in practice. Like he was coming off the corner and Joey got surprised how quickly the car turned around hit the inside wall, had to go to a backup. Tricks to the bottom of the racetrack right here, trying to get around this lap car. Bone oh, round goes to 47. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. slides and the caution will come out. Sitting on the end of the back straight over here with a couple flat tires. 
He was 18th when he went around. And with under four laps to go, Steve, this is going to probably end the stage. They won't be able to get back to green. The toe link is broke. You see a little damage on the wheel well. Let's see what happens. So it looks like, I'm going to call it light contact. Anywhere else, that would be a little bit heavy wall contact. Here in Miami, light contact. But then it breaks the toe link, and you think that's what causes the, the eventual spin? Well, I, you know, that, that's difficult to tell. But sometimes, Steve, when the car gets in the wall, it just sucks it into the wall. You can't get away from it. It just keeps banging back into it. And then, yes, I think it did break the, the toe link, and that's why it ultimately spun. Kyle Larson first into the gas as stage two is underway. Kozlowski tried to clear the five, couldn't make it happen. Now the five fighting back on the outside. It's not over. Brad Kozlowski staying really low, trying to avoid the side draft. Now moving up to him to try to get a better angle into turn three. Up the racetrack, the 19 had to get out of the gas before he hit the 24 of Byron. See that Gibbs car, number 54 at the top of the racetrack, using that high line, using that clean air as well. Been able to gain a ton of spots. Oh, Brad Kozlowski, he's trying to stay, just stay alongside William Byron. He did not run to the bottom of the racetrack, ran all the way up the racetrack, trying to crowd him. Whoa. Now up into him, entering turn one to improve his angle into turn one, and now he's just going to take the spot. Brad Kozlowski out of the playoffs, but he still has a ton of fight in him. Now we see Denny Hamlin, no surprise. He's pinning with 41 laps on his tires and 41 laps to go in this stage. So once again, just splitting this up directly in the middle. Uh, he was about 10th, 11 seconds back when the pit cycle started with the leaders. The reason why there weren't many lead changes last year was because the driver of the five led 199 laps. And here, maybe a little bit too close to the wall. Do you, with his lead right now, he's got a 5.6 second lead, Steve, as crew chief. Are you going to tell him, hey, you don't need to be running inches off the wall right now? Not with a win in the bank. I'm saying let's get to a 10 second lead, 15, 18. I want to demoralize the field. I want the field to think there's no chance they could beat us for a championship at Phoenix. This is our moment. We won a week ago. This race doesn't matter. So to me, it's going to matter more because if you win the race that you don't need to win, that is really doubling down. I think, though, that with that win in the bank, he could take those risks. He could push it a little harder. Everyone else has got to keep that car straight to try to get to the end of this stage and the end of this race while he can take a little bit bigger risks than the rest of the field. And look at the 12 car. It just gains on him big time right oh, here. Larson's in big trouble right there. Slid up, didn't make the bottom of the corner. He's lost all that grip. Here comes the 12 on the inside. So now Blaney takes the lead away as Harrison Burton's also going to try to unlap himself. And right behind this group is Byron. Byron in that 24 right there. I think the 12 can get away here possibly if he can clear this five. Oh, the 12 just barely got in front of the five there. Just barely slid in front of him. And Blaney coming out of turn four, a close one there. But Blaney is going to win stage two here in Miami. Byron second, Larson. Looks as though he's going to hang on for third. That's Blaney's fifth stage win of the season. Blaney in the middle of the track, a three-car fight for third behind him. Byron strong on the inside, but here comes Blaney back through the middle of the racetrack. I feel like William Byron's got a really fast car taking off, not quite as good on a long run, trying to clear Blaney. Kozlowski running that high line already. Denny Hamlin and Larson really tight off of turn two. Almost contact right there. See the battle for the lead off turn four. Byron went to the top in three and four. That gave Blaney the bottom. Blaney took it. Byron a big side draft trying to slow the 12 down. Limiting how much Blaney could come up the racetrack on that entry to one. Oh, they're tight off of two. Back to you. Little side draft down the back straightaway. Byron trying to get the side draft off the 12 car. He's going to make that work. 12 to the bottom, dives down in, pinned to the bottom of the racetrack. 
Beautiful corner by Blaney right here. And he's staying in the gas, drifting up the racetrack. He can, he's not have to lift it all to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to break the draft. Here comes Larson now. Larson will now go to the high side, and Denny will try that quote-unquote Larson line. Larson doesn't do a slide job right there. Maybe down in turn one and two, he might try that opportunity, but he's going to clear. Pretty impressed by that. Levin gives him a shove as he goes into turn one. Spider said push him again. He's like, yeah, I know. I got it. The 11 had a little issue, got into the wall as he was chasing after Kyle Larson. So Kyle Larson goes by him, and he starts watching Kyle. He starts trying to do what Kyle does, and this is what happens. Man, he was in the fence a long time through that corner, and that's when you risk knocking the sidewall out of the tires and getting a flat. Blaney down the back stretch continues the lead with 55 to go. He's coming to the bottom of the racetrack. And the five's going to chase him in, to your point, Jeff. He cannot allow the 12 to get a lap. Look at the five gain to the rear bumper. Oh, of the, 12. oh and the five into the water. The barrier's right at the end of pit road. He slides into him, damage to the right front. That's going to bring the yellow out. They're going to have to throw the caution to be able to repair those barriers. Kyle Larson just trying so hard to gain ground on Ryan Blaney. He just misjudged it. It's badly damaged his five car as well. Look how much he's gaining on him, and he has no choice but to turn right or run into the back of Blaney. He turns right and gets the end of the pit wall. Just so, to way too much speed here. And heavy, heavy damage with these barrels. Yeah, you have to wonder, the pit road speed starts right there past the barrel, or right at the very, uh, just past the barrels, about 10 feet. You have to wonder what what speed was Blaney doing? That contact to the back of the left rear of the 12 probably is gonna help things that bowed out the quarter or the quarter panel just past, just behind the wheel. That's not a, a good thing aerodynamically, but I'm not sure that Blaney wasn't doing a good job getting on pit road. Maybe the five was actually cooking it on the pit road a little bit too much. Harvey didn't get a good start there. Now he's three wide. Almondinger oh. fights him to the inside. 12 had a problem in the middle of the corner, got really slow. 11 got by him, and look at the run coming from Bell. Bell to the inside of Blaney. He'll try to take second oh. away, and sliding in and hitting the walls of 15. The 42 is also involved. Another car here as well. Like That's the one. one of Ross Chastain. He's got right front damage. A lot of cars in the same spot. You know, three wide, four wide, just not so sure if everybody knew. See right there, 42 into the six, the six into the one, turns the one sideways. And they all, oh, big, big contact for Brad on that outside line. And John Hunter Nemechek in that 42 car, that's the first time he's driven that car this, this year. So, you know, working with a new spotter, maybe a little bit of communication. Her. It, it's tight off the turn two on these late restarts. <laughs> I was waiting for that. You're not referring to yesterday, are you? Yeah. <laughs> this time, Blaney up to speed better. Is he going to get the front turn down here? One and two, he's looking for. He's going to be able to stay on the outside of that 11. Much better restart for the 12. Side by side down the back straightaway. Here comes the 20. Who's the push coming to? Three wide, no pushing. I'm going to try to take the lead. Blaney to the bottom of the racetrack. They're side by side, oh, door to door, that. up high. Bell's long gone. Still three wide for second. Will Byron clear them both for second? Three wide for second continues. Blaney on the high side. The fight for second continues. No one taking an advantage. Now the 24 is going to drift up the racetrack and take that second spot. Seabell out Denny, front. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Denny was going to slow Ford, it up outside, in front outside, of him, outside. just couldn't get there. And there's a huge running coming from behind. They are upset at each other. Yeah, Blaney had to live. They lost all kinds of momentum. Harvick on the bottom of the racetrack with Logano 
just above him and the three of Dylan three wide there. Finally Blaney clears man he has to be so he's fuming right now. Then he'll have the advantage on the top. Those two continue to fight for third Bell and Byron in front of them by a second. And behind this, Truex on those tires, he's gone. Oh, nowhere. into the wall hard is the 11. Denny Hamlin hard into the wall in turn one. Green caution, 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 Massive caution. contact, big, big damage to the right front of that car. Something broke in the steering. Oh, something broke. Yeah, that car went straight into turn one, right into the fence. Hard, hard contact for Denny Hamlin. Before the contact, Denny Hamlin 10 points above the cut line. We'll see how this is going to affect this team. Down the, down the front straight away. Let's take a look. Off into the corner. Yeah, looks, looks like either the right front went down or something in the steering. The toe link broke. I'm not quite sure, but that car goes straight into the fence. You've seen it sort of jolt. Watch his steering wheel. Watch the steering wheel. See if anything happens there. Oh, did you see a steering wheel jerk out of his hands right there? Denny Hamlin with a steering issue and his teammate Martin Truex Jr. with an issue as well. This was under green a moment ago. Yeah, I thought my motor was feeling bad. Got no power. I think it might be blowing up. They're done, Rick. Yep. And Truex did say, if I shut it off, I feel like it will not start. And James Small said, shut it off. Plenty fighting hard on the outside there. Much better restart for him on new tires. Side by side, here comes a 20 with a run. Does he go to the bottom of the racetrack? Byron's had good speed on the short runs all day. Not good on long runs. He needs to get this lead right now. Just can't clear the 12 right here. Here comes. There's a 12 Blaney back by down the front straightaway. The 24 is going to side draft a little bit. They even out into one. 24 surging ahead, and the 12 drops back to second. Now, with that lower line, the 12's fighting big back bottom, on the inside. Bottom, 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 bottom. So much on the line for these playoff drivers. A guaranteed spot at Phoenix for the championship race. Bell now even with the 12. Can Bell clear Blaney? He does as Blaney wiggles a bit. Half lane, full lane, lower. Just try to work the middle there. Oh, the 20 throttles up. He might get to the quarter panel. We're side by side to the flag stand. 15 laps to go. Now for the lead. Bell on the inside. Byron gassing it up on the outside, trying to keep that momentum up as he goes almost all the way up to the wall. 20's clear on the two. In the lead, Christopher Bell. When you talk about risk versus reward, this is where the 12's got to go for it. Just ship it down in there. There you go. Slide in front of William Byron. Now you got a shot. The gap now increasing. 1.5 seconds for Bell. Yeah, Bell can be conservative here on his line, not really push it right up against the wall. He's got plenty to give up here if he wants to just kind of take it easy to be able to cruise home. I feel like Blaney had the made the assessment, I can't get to him. And then Blaney said, hey, I can't hit the wall here. I got to get this second place finished. Get as many points as possible. It's one lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank. Christopher Bell didn't run a green flag lap in the top five until lap 221. And now, after overcoming a slow pit stop, Christopher Bell goes down the back stretch and he can see a shot at the championship. Christopher Bell off of turn four. And the 28-year-old is going to lock himself into the championship four. He's won in Miami. Okay. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.